Hey, and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at configuring PC queues on a MicroTIC. So our configuration steps are going to be quite simple. We're going to configure some mangle rules. We're going to build our unique queue types, and then we'll build our queue tree structure with those two elements. But before we get going, let's just a quick overview of uh, what are PC queues. So in MicroTIC, there's basically uh, two types of queuing. We've got first in, first out, which uh, simply processes packets in the order that they arrive. So this is suitable for basic traffic management, but it lacks the uh, prioritization features. And then we have PC queue or per connection queue. So this dynamically manages multiple connections. So this ensures fair bandwidth distribution amongst users or devices. So, PCQ simplifies the QoS or QoS by dynamically creating sub queues for each connection. So, allowing for dynamic queue creation, classification, bandwidth limiting, and burst support. So, dynamic sub queue creation means that each user or connection receives its own sub queue without uh, manual intervention. Uh, classification, this will group packets based on criteria like IP addresses or ports, which we're going to uh, some more detail in when we come to configuring. Uh, bandwidth limiting enforces maximum bandwidth limits per sub queue, and then burst support, which allows temporary bandwidth spikes when excess capacity, capacity is available. So PC queues are particularly useful for equal bandwidth allocation, dynamic traffic shaping, and prioritization of traffic types. So uh, we can ensure each user receives a fair share of bandwidth. Um, we can dynamically adjust the number of users or connections within the, without constraints, um, sorry, without constraint re reconfiguration. And uh, the traffic types, we can allocate resources based on traffic type, enhancing the overall network performance. And then the other aspect is the port and address based. So let's have a quick overview of the address based PCQ. So here we have um, three packets of data. So we're, we're starting with the source address. We've got a source address of 192.168.10 and 192.168.11. So the first packet is uh, obviously this is its NAT port and then its destination is I've just used 1234 to emulate a, an internet um, facing IP address and it's uh, using 443. So because the source is coming from dot 10, it moves into uh, this, this per connection queue. So the next packet again is coming from 10, dot 10, so it goes into the same queue. And then the dot 11 packet goes into the, the dot 11 queue. So then if we look at based on the destination this time, so again, we've got the first packet is destined for one, two, three, four, so it goes in there. And then one, two, three, five goes in the another queue, and then another packet for one, two, three, four goes in there. So as you can see, based on the source or the destination address, they're grouped accordingly. Now, if we look at port based, again we've got the same packets, um, but this time we sp split our queues into ports. So the first queue is for four, four, three, so HTTPS. The next uh, packet, even though it's coming from the same source of dot 10 it's now going into a separate queue because this is dns traffic and again the last pa uh, packet although it's now coming from dot 11 goes in the same queue as the dot 10 one but because it's again destined for 443 irrespective of the destination address as well so let's go ahead and do some configuring So here I've got a uh, Microtech CHR, which I've installed on um, VMware. Um, I've configured uh, some addresses. I've also got a two local two bridges, which are um, have the interfaces two and three, irrespectively. Um, and either one is my upstream network, which goes to the development network. So there's no uh, other than a default gateway for um, pointing all traffic towards the um, upstream router 
There's no natting or uh, any other uh, routing going on here, so it's very simple. These two users have their subnets here, they have the DHCP server on them, and then on there I've got two VMs, two Windows VMs, both for um, the clients. So what we're going to do is we're going to build our Mangle rules first. So we get IP firewall, go to the Mangle tab. Okay, we're going to create for user one, we're going to do an upload and a download. So for upload, we're going to use pre routing, and for download, we're going to use post routing. So we want these to match um, for upload before they get routed and then coming back into the before they're forwarded onto the client. So then we're going to, for uh, the, the source or the destination in the download um, case, we're going to use the client's subnet. So any client that's associated with that subnet or that network will get applied the same rules. And um, we could just stick the IP address in here. However, what I like prefer to do is use the address lists because it means then if we don't want to add additional subnets within the same uh, queues or within the same rules, same bandwidth allocation, we've only to simply add them to the same list and we don't have to, we don't have to create a whole new manga rules. And this can apply for all firewalling rules, NAT rules, anything you like. I just find it a little cleaner, a little neater um, and more scalable. There we go. So now we've got our two address rules there. So now in the drop down here for a source address list for our upload, we can see user one. And the same for download, we do destination. Oh, no, user one. Okay, now we get an action for both. And then we're gonna make, we're gonna mark packets. We'll untick pass through because we wanna match on a rule and then we don't want it to move on to other rules. And we're gonna give it user one upload all this one user two no user one download okay now what we're going to do is do the same thing for our user two so pre-routing post-routing for download source is going to be user two subnets no destination sorry for download Okay, action, we're going to mark packet, mark packet, okay, and again, so where we call this one user one, upload, we can just call this user two, upload, and here, we can call this user two, download, okay, those, there we go. So there's our mangle rule set. Now we can look at queues. So first thing we do is we're gonna create some queue types. Now I've, we've already got the PCQ default ones in here, but we're gonna go ahead and create our own. We call it PCQ-port-download. Select PCQ. And this is gonna be our download, so this is gonna be and it's going to be port, so it's going to be destination port. Uh, and then that's we leave the rest default. We OK in that. Let's create another one. So PCQ dash port dash upload this time. And again, PCQ source port this time. Okay, PCQ this time we're going to do address download. Change that to PCQ destination address this time and lastly pcq dash address dash upload and source address there we go now we have our queue types we can build our queue tree okay now again this step is not crucial but however it's just a a pref personal preference um, that does have its benefits because if you have a if you had all of your uh, individual queues in their own in the global parent 
then uh, should your bandwidth not be capable of um, meeting the uh, all the queues when they're maxing out, then there's you would then kill all your other connections. So you basically could grind your traffic to a halt. Whereas this way we can say we've got 100 meg bandwidth available to us. We could set a, a global one at uh, 50, 50 meg, which means that all the combined queues within this queue, tree, leaf, branch, whatever you want to call it, can never ex ex exceed 50 meg. So then if we wanted some, we wanted to say some management or we wanted some, uh, you know, other important traffic, we wanted some voice traffic, we wanted dedicated bandwidth that we were offering to say a client that we were supplying the internet to, um, then we could make sure that was outside of this uh, uh, queue, which would then mean it wouldn't be affected by anything that's happening within this queue. So it's, it's just a way of ensuring that we uh, keep things uh, moving along. So again, we'll do one for upload. Uh, no, no mark, default. And then again, we'll just give this one 50 as well. So now what we do is we build our queues within this one. So we'll call this one user 01, upload. We'll keep this one within the upload parent now. This time we, we wanna use packet marks for user one upload. We're going to select our, so for user one, let's use PCQ address, the upload one, and let's set the upload to be 10 meg. Now let's do the same for download. So call user one, that's download. Again in the download queue, marking, uh, use packet marks for user one download. Select our, what did we use before? Address, so address download. And then this time we'll give it say 20 meg as you can see they're now sitting underneath these queues here so let's add the other user so user two upload upload parent uh, then we want user two upload we're going to select our port, port this time so pcq port upload and again we'll give them we'll give them both 10 meg so we can do the comparison later and make it as equal as possible and our last one is user 02-download again within the download queue marking user 2 download pcq port download and again let's give it 20 meg okay good there we go see all equal make sure i've got the right marks against the right names good stuff Okay, now let's do some testing. So if we load our two VMs up here, so we've got user one is on uh, third octet is one, user two is third octet is two. Um, let's go ahead and run a speed test on each one. So for this example, I've, as I mentioned before, we're just gonna use the same speed for both. So 20 down and 10 up. Okay, 20, 20. And if we look at our queues, we'll see these both lighting up. Going red. User one seems to be doing some sort of upload. Oh, it's probably moved on already. There you go, starting this upload now. And the same we use it two. We should be getting just under 10 meg. on the old remote desktop okay cool there we are yeah so 10 meg pretty much so in terms of per address and per port there's not a lot of difference in that so let's now go ahead and let's try and generate some additional traffic so now let's run the same speed test again but this time we're going to generate some additional traffic so for this, I'm just going to download Ubuntu, download. 
set these going in the background. Nope. Start, there we go. Right. Let's test again. Okay, so on the left we've got per port, sorry, per address, and on the right we've got per port. So as you can see, although we're not reaching even on our with our per port, we're not reaching our maximum 20, we're significantly higher than our address. And then when we look at download, uh, upload, sorry pretty much unaffected because we're obviously downloading a file there we go so now if we just also do that again and see what's happening while that test is running and then look at uh, firewall look at the uh, connections as you can see it's a speed test is using 8080 and then our download is working on 443 because we're downloading it for our web browser so if I was to transfer a file via SSH or FTP then obviously we'd see different uh, port numbers there but this is just a really high level quick view of the differences um, so because we're using the per port one we're getting um, shared we're getting that bandwidth allocated per the port that we're using. So anything in 443 is going to be limited to 20 meg. And also 20 meg is allowed for the download as well. So although this is using, um, probably using more bandwidth than we are allocating, it does mean that um, one, basically one user, one um, source of traffic is less likely to grind the whole network. Um, to a halt. Um, if you've ever seen it before, we're probably a few more years ago now than today, where bandwidth was uh, uh, less freely available. Um, someone doing a Dropbox upload or a Windows update could bring down the network. Everything would run slow. This way, it just gives you, hopefully, uh, alleviates that initial headache and, um, in more importantly, uh, increases the user experience which if you ever worked in a, a knock or uh, you know, support in any way you'll understand that um, if it ha a user is happy it makes your job a lot easier so uh, yeah I hope this has uh, been clear enough for you if you want me to go into any more detail about any of these um, uh, differences uh, if you've got a use case or you've tried this before it hasn't worked you want to try something a bit more complex um, feel free to uh, to reach out you can have a comment on this video or you can head to the website marketingmasters.com uh, and you can comment on the article there which is uh, in the description below which is a step-by-step -step of this video um, yeah and if you've got any other ideas please check out my other videos um, and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next one thanks